opposite action to quit porn. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Welcome back to another episode of Porn Brain Rewire, the podcast. Uh, let's dig in today. So this concept comes from my handsome son, Declan, and he has this idea of when you feel stuck to use the opposite action. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So first we're going to talk about what is the current action that you are taking and why when it comes to porn use? That's number one. Number two is once you understand what your current action is, what is the opposite action and how can you take it? And then number three today is going to be getting your journal out and personalizing this opposite action so you can take it today. So let's dive in. First of all, when it comes to porn use, what is the current action and why are you doing it? Well, when you have the urge or the craving to move towards using and consuming pornography, that action is one of escape. It's one of isolation. So I want you to think about this logically with me. You are compelled or you have a compulsion to try to relax is fast as possible by using a behavior that involves technology that gives you an unreality, a high level stimulus from fantasy and coupled with masturbation that is higher level physical stimulation. So we've got high level mental stimulation, high level physical stimulation, to escape, to numb out. That's the current action. Why are you doing it? So we know from science, and again, just thinking logically, that when people use porn, the reason they want to escape and take the edge off and numb out is to dissociate from reality, take themselves out of their reality as a mechanism of stress reduction. The number one reason people use porn is to reduce stress. So we know now what your current action and the why is. You're going towards porn to shift your brain into artificial neutral as fast as you possibly can to take you out of your reality and put you in a very stimulating, self-soothing, numbing unreality for as long as you can. It's stress reduction. That's the current action. So what would be the opposite action of escape and isolation? In fact, it is engaging and connecting. So in the moments when you feel like you want to go use porn to reduce stress, the opposite action is to engage with your life to figure out how to get rid of the stressors or to decrease the stressors and to learn how to offset stress in healthy ways, not in maladaptive ways such as porn use or other self-sabotaging habits. Okay, so that's one and two combined. But I want to think about this a little bit more before we move on to number three for the day. So the idea is, why do we do self-sabotaging behalf? habits or behaviors like why are they there in the first place why do you go to porn in the first place why is that your outlet so it goes back to your childhood and in childhood there was a need for you to find a way to survive so you figured out how to get into survival mode survival mode made it so that you're taking care of yourself to feel safe and secure because your reality was overwhelming. When you found porn, it was a really easy and a really good way to do that. And especially you likely found it at the time when you were exploring sexuality altogether. So now it seems to be the end all and be all because it's got everything in it that you're looking for at that point in adolescence. But unfortunately, when that happened, the seeds of addiction were planted. Those seeds of compulsion that will keep bringing you back to porn because it is a super normal stimulus. It has higher levels of stimulation, especially when it's coupled with masturbation. So it became your one survival mechanism tool in an unhealthy toolbox to escape stress. 
And then the more you use a tool, the more it becomes the tool you go to. So because you keep going to it consistently, frequently, and especially if it's changed to higher level intensity, now that dopamine has you by the brain. I bet you didn't think I was going to say that. I bet you thought I was going to say something else. It has you by the brain. So it is pulling you back in when the push of stress is still there. Now here is the really, really ironic and devastating part of porn use is that not only is the push of stress still there, but a porn habit actually increases your stress and it decreases the dopamine levels that you experience in life. So now your life is no longer doing it for you because it's been linked to the screen to get as much pleasure as humanly possible. And so a lot of this goes back to your programming when you were young. One other thought about your programming and then we'll move on to your brain hack strategy. I've been thinking about my own programming and the hubs is programming, some programming of some of my friends. I've been thinking about that lately because we all have different programming, but the programming that we have kind of has us caught up in the cycles of our parents. Yes. And that doesn't come with judgment because honestly, I also have seen some posts online really kind of ripping parents a new one for all the intergenerational trauma that, you know, we experience as young adults or middle aged adults or older adults. You know, I, I thought this today, you know how I have five kids plus my bonus son. So uh, I was thinking this moms, moms cannot get out alive. Moms are always the ones who are screwing up their kids, even though as a mom, I am trying my very, very best, but my best can never be good enough. It literally can't because I'm a human being and I'm flawed and I make errors. And even though I'm trying to make the least amount as possible and I'm much more emotionally mature than most other moms, I still can't be perfect in the way that I show up for my kids in the way they want me to. I am trying. Moms can't do it. Dads can't do it. So the programming of your parents is partially the programming of their parents before them. So I'm always trying to undo my parents' crap. And then I'm trying to get my children to not buy into mine, yet I am human. So it's a tricky scenario. So here's some examples is that the hubs he has this relationship with money where he makes a lot of money and then he spends a lot of money, constantly leaving him in a stressful state around money. And he gets this from, in part, from his parents and the way he was grown, he grew up, the way that he was nature, nurture, and navigation. We've talked about that before on this podcast. So it's part of the programming that he grew up with. It becomes his self-sabotaging behavior on accident because it needs to be broken. It's intergenerational trauma and he's trying and he's in a much better place than his parents were, but he still has to figure it out himself. I was thinking about a friend of mine who finds himself in conflict all the time. That conflict serves to create the survival mode. The Hubs' money situation serves to keep him in survival mode. It is an ego little s mechanism to keep us down. I was even thinking about myself is that, and mom, if you're listening, I'm sorry about this. Go back to that part where moms can't do things right. If you're listening is that my mom always kind of plays the victim and I make sure I don't play the victim. Sometimes that leads to what I call self-righteousness, which swings me way too far in the opposite direction where I think I can do everything myself, which is still an ego survival mechanism. The victimhood piece is negative attention seeking behavior. So coming off of a lot of health issues, I had to try to hit the sweet spot of not doing everything myself and being vulnerable and opening myself up to people, but also not getting stuck in victimhood. And I made a video on my other YouTube channel, Control Your Brain, um, about 
becoming the victor instead of the victim because that's the message to myself. So I want you to think about what is the self-sabotaging behaviors or programming you might have going on that is pushing you into the screen also because it's been there to offset your programming, which partially is your parents' programming, which again, isn't their fault, but it is something that you need to learn to move beyond. Okay, so let's go to number three with that earful and brain full of information. Number three is get out your pleather journal, get out your fancy pen, get into what I call my sanctuary, a quiet place where nobody can bother me, and really think about the ideas that I presented to you today. So let me wrap them up with a bow. The first idea is you're moving towards porn and masturbation to feel really good, really fast to take you out of reality. Why? It's a maladaptive survival mechanism. I want you out of survival and into thrival. Thrival's where it's at. You get to create. You get to be the best authentic version of yourself. You don't need to self-soothe. So the behavior that you have going takes you into porn. So let's take the opposite action, which is to approach and engage in your life and not to isolate, but to connect. And remember, going back to my story about not being self-righteous, but also not being the victim, being vulnerable, opening yourself up to your person or your few people, the one person or the few people who can be there for you. They can show up and support you so that you know you're not in this world alone. Somebody else has got your back while you take care of yourself in a really powerful way. So figure out how you're going to approach and engage your life, who you're going to connect with, even if it's a paid coach. I had to have, I still have paid coaches, but I had to pay people to give me emotionally mature advice because there was no one in my life who could do that. So if you're saying right now, I'm alone, sister, you've got this network of people. I've got a couple people and we've worked hard. The hubs and I just had our 22nd anniversary. We keep showing up in the middle of junk for each other. It hasn't been all roses and rainbows and sunshine and unicorn. It has been a journey of rupture and repair and showing up for each other, even when it's difficult so that we can help each other through and become the best versions of ourselves with our with each other's support. So you're lucky if you find one person is the way that I think about it, but it might be a coach to get started. Then really explore the programming. Think about what it might be that you keep doing to yourself that keeps you stuck in survival mode on accident. Do you keep conflict going in your life? So there's always a problem. Is there chaos? And I've thought that to myself too. There's always so much chaos. So when the option to move towards chaos presents itself, I'm trying to not move towards chaos. How do I solve this simply and calmly without stirring the pot? Because chaos has reigned in my past and I don't want it in my present or my future. So I have to take the opposite action. Don't move towards chaos, move towards peace, calm, focused solution take the opposite action of where you want to go in those situations too. So if you want to sue someone, instead of suing someone, find an amicable solution. If you want to yell at someone, get space so you can show back up with healthy interaction and communication. Opposite action it, baby. Figure out in your journal how you're going to do that today. And especially when it comes to moving towards the screen, how are you going to approach and engage the stress or the reality in your life to make it better. It always involves becoming more vulnerable and looking at the difficult pieces of your life and being able to do something different. So figure out what that is. And I just wanna reassure you one more thing. When you become vulnerable, it actually allows you to become invulnerable. Nothing can hurt you when you are your true authentic self that doesn't need to hide or escape. When you're willing to show up as yourself and people can accept you or not, but you accept you, you become invulnerable and it's game over moving towards thrival. Okay, 
please go over to drtrishlee.com if you want to explore this idea and especially if you want to see how your brain's been impacted by your past and how i can help you show up with new programming and to take the opposite action check out the qeg brain map it's the first step of working with me and until next time control your brain or it'll control you i'll see you then